In this video, we're going to look at how to create a sketch without creating a sketch pretzel. As one of my uh, patrons described it, we're going to look at how do we uh, make sure the lines on sketches are closed and how to manipulate the sketch without it turning inside out or creating something that you don't want. But first, I just want to say thank you to my patrons. Um, our list is growing. The, the uh, number of subscribers has gone up significantly. I appreciate them. It does help the channel because it's going to help me to, to purchase the things I need to improve the videos. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm looking to get. Microphone and uh, some a stand and some other things that I need um, to be able to do better videos. So again, thank you to them. You can see them listed now on the screen and I really appreciate them uh, signing up and helping me. They also help me to come up with the topics for these videos. In fact, this video is all their suggestions. So of course, I'm going to make videos that they want to see first. Uh, although I am listening to the subscribers from YouTube and I have uh, just seen a request for a video for threads. So we might do that in the future. So without further ado, we're going to get on with this video. So the first thing we want to do is to create a new file. And for those of you who watched the video where you had your own startup macro, you created your own. Uh, you can use that, the startup macro. I'm going to do it manually for those who haven't created a startup macro. So I'm just going to create a new file. And then I'm going to create a part. I'm going to create a body and I am going to, I'm going to switch over to my model tree so you can see that. And I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it pretzel sketch. We're not going to sketch a pretzel. We're going to make sure that our sketch doesn't turn into a pretzel. So first things first, I'm just going to create um, a sketch on the XY plane. And one of the things I notice with my sketches is if I start sketching at this, where the screen just starts up, everything is tiny. So I usually zoom out. I'm actually scrolling my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. And then I start creating lines. Now what I'm going to do, I would normally um, sketch the shape that I want I would just rough it out as a sketch before I do any constraints. However, I want to show you a couple of things. So let's just go with a line. Now remember, when I'm creating this line, if I want it to be horizontal, if I lower that end of the line, you see that horizontal constraint pop on? So now if I click it, it's going to make it horizontal. If I don't want that, I can go above there where the horizontal line clicks off. The other piece that you see there in my cursor is that I have the line tool selected. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to um, bring this to horizontal and just click it. So now you see that the horizontal constraint was applied. So it's important to watch your cursor uh, when you're creating these things. So I'm going to do another line and if I go to the end point of this line, if you watch my cursor again, you see that little X? That X is basically saying the next point that I do will be connected to that end point. So if I click there, that is now a connected line. I'm just going to leave it over here for a minute. And I'm going to right click and you'll watch that line cursor, the line tool cursor disappear. So that's gone. Now I can grab this line and try and move it. And when I move it, you see they're attached. So let me create another line. I'm going to go back to the line and just create a line in free space. I'll create it horizontally just for fun. And I'm going to right click to get rid of the line cursor so I'm not drawing any more lines. And then this end of this line is not attached to anything. 
and I can't attach it just by overlaying it. If I just let it go there, there's no constraint holding that together so that it's still a separate line. What happens is if you do that, you make it look like it's connected, but it's not actually connected. When you come to create your model, you may get an error that says open face. And that's basically because these things are not connected. So if I've drawn this line, but I actually wanted it to be connected to here, what I can do is I can click this point, click this point, and then go up to my constraints menu to that X that we saw before. I click that, and now those two are connected solidly. So I know they're connected. So again, if I'm going to draw another piece, I'll take this line. I go here, you see that little X comes on, that means it's going to attach. And I'm going to intentionally not attach this line. Now I'm going to right click to get rid of that cursor. And now I'm going to talk about how we get this pretzel effect, as people call it. If the, if the sketch turns inside out, typically you, you're going to see that. So if I grab this point and bring it down here, my sketch is turning inside out. That's not what I want. So if I, if I go over here, I can very quickly end up with something that doesn't look like the, the shape that I'm creating. So, so we have to be mindful of the constraints that we've applied, whether or not our lines are actually attached, and how we might move these lines if we apply dimensions. So for instance, if I want this to be an angle that goes out this way, this yellow line, if I dimension from this point back to here, but I make that dimension smaller than that top dimension, it's going to pull it over this way. So one of the things I recommend is when you are creating sketches, and I would recommend you just create one for fun, just try moving things around and understanding how they're constrained and how that moving it around might mess up the geometry that you wanted. So here I think is somewhat a pretzel type shape. And again, the pretzel type shape is created by how I constrain this sketch. Now, if I want to put it back to something like it was, I can just move everything back to the way it was. Now, if I connect these two points with that same constraint, and then I turn this thing inside out by just grabbing things and moving them around, I can very quickly, you can see now, my shape does not represent anything like the shape I had. And I think some people get turned around with this stuff and it, it doesn't end up being the shape that they want it to be. But you can move everything around if you understand the constraints that you've imposed. So on this model, or on sorry, on this sketch, I only have two constraints. I have this guy and this guy that are visible. But I also have these constraints. Remember I constrained these endpoints. And if we look over on this side, if we go over here, you can see all the constraints. And these are the constraints that are holding the, the model together, the lines together. I keep calling it a model. It's actually a sketch. So they're holding the sketch lines together. So I can see all those constraints. And I can turn those constraints on and off. I can delete those constraints. Or I can activate and deactivate those constraints. So let's have a look at how constraints can can uh, mess you up. And so <clears throat> I'm going to dimension this point back to here. Remember, if we want to dimension to this um, origin, we can just click on one point and hit a dimension. So I can see that dimension is 174. So if I made it 10, I've now broken my shape because of the, the way I'm dimensioning it. So if I want to keep my shape, what I would do 
is if my shape is like this, where I have a piece that's longer and we have an angle that's going this way, you can either dimension this angle first or dimension this point first. That way you know what that dimension is and you know to keep this dimension much smaller. So let's assume this one was only supposed to be 10. It doesn't matter that that's much smaller. I still have the angle. This is still sticking out roughly in the shape that I want it to be. And then I can dimension this one. Um, not like that. I got to dimension it, just select that point. And then if that was going to be 20, let's say. So now I have that angle and I have my dimensions and I have the, the sketch shape that I wanted. So definitely sketching is one of those things you want to do and constrain carefully so you don't turn everything inside out. And if you've watched other videos of mine, you'll know that I generally try to constrain geometry first and then dimensions. So I like to get my geometry right, like these horizontal or any kind of symmetry that you're building in. I try to get all that done first. Now, remember, if we dimension this way with that single point and we make a dimension here, you're going to get a negative dimension. I don't like those, so I don't do that. Um, I only do the single point dimensions in the positive. So if I'm to the right or above, or basically in this quadrant over here, I will use that single point. Otherwise, you just select this point. So if I cancel that, I select this point and select this point and dimension. Now it's a positive dimension, and that's what I prefer. So I'm going to cancel that because I don't need that dimension. So hopefully that helps you with getting your sketches drawn out um, without creating um, a, a situation where you have a pretzel and it, a turned inside out sketch. Uh, and it helps you with getting the, the pieces connected properly so that you have a single uh, shape with no open faces. Now, one thing I do when I'm creating a sketch, and I'm going to close this sketch and just delete it. I'm just going to delete that sketch completely because I don't want that one. Now I'm going to create a new sketch, and it's going to be on the XY plane, and we'll start again with a fresh sketch. So what I do when I'm sketching things, I'm creating a model. So I know roughly what shape I want that model to be. I know what roughly what shape I want my sketch to be. So I just rough out the sketch. I rough out that shape and try to make it something like I want it to be. Now, if I know it's going to be a bunch of straight lines, I'm going to use this tool. And this tool is the polyline. Then I can go from here to here. And I'm watching the cursor. So if I want it to be a vertical line, I'll make sure that, that cursor comes on. Horizontal line. A vertical line, horizontal line, a vertical line, an angle, horizontal line, vertical line, horizontal. And then if I want this to be connected, I can just go to the end point and it will automatically close it. Or I can go up here and just do a, a horizontal line and then trim those lines. So let me show you that way. So if I go with that. Uh, sorry, vertical line. So now if I want to trim these so that they join, I use this trim tool. So this says trim an edge with respect to the picked position. So I click that, trim this, and it cuts it back and joins it to that line. Now if I go to this one, I zoomed in so I can, let's, let's just move that down for you. I zoomed in so I can get to that end. And now that is the shape that I wanted. So I'm going to put that in the middle. So I roughly have the shape that I want. Now, if I've drawn it and I decide, uh oh, I needed to have another piece in here. So, you know, maybe that that distance is wrong or something. Kind of looks like a map of Texas. <laughs> um, if I wanted to put a, a cut in here now, I take my polyline and I would just go this way. 
that's going to be vertical, horizontal, and vertical. And then I use my trim tool again. I'll cut out this middle piece and I'll trim off those top pieces. And there I have that shape. So when I create a sketch, I'm trying to create the rough shape before I do uh, many of the um, constraints because I want it to look something like I want it to be before I care about how big it actually is or or how that shape is constrained. I want to get it to be something similar to what I want. So I hope this has helped you to how not to noodle your sketches. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, I appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. I also appreciate it if you consider uh, becoming a patron and uh, obviously the links below in this in the description.